All right, we'll get started. Hello, everyone. Thank you again for carving out time in your days. We understand it has been harder than ever, but we really appreciate you joining our webinar on how hiring managers can improve your recruitment marketing. I'm Megan Goulet. I am the marketing director at Monster Worldwide, and I'm very excited to introduce our panel today. My co-host is Jay Rustin. He is Video My Jobs head of marketing. Joining us today are also Katrina Kibben. She is the CEO and founder of Three Ears Media. And we also have Betsy Hunt, and she's a recruitment marketing specialist at Dynatrace. So let's jump right in. You know, with everything going on, you may have paused your hiring. You have maybe started opening up recs. You might be facing more furloughs, you know, or if you're one of the lucky ones, you've never stopped and you've just kept moving. But wherever you are in your hiring, your open roles have never been more critical to your organization than they are right now. Yeah, thanks, Megan. And, you know, it's really difficult to talk about anything work-related or job-related without taking into account the impact of COVID. Um, you know, we're in a phase now where we've got increased unemployment and also a, a more risk-adverse mindset in the general population. So um, it's a trickier situation than usual to balance the quantity and quality side of things. So the importance of articulating the value of those roles, building the trust and attracting uh, a talented and diverse set of candidates um, to take a risk on the job or, or a new job is elevated as a result. So at Video My Job, even when we surveyed candidates back in 2018, well before COVID, um, about how they would be most interested about hearing about a job before applying, the hiring manager was almost, uh, was already the biggest at about 45%. And that, that was double the next nearest option. Um, yeah, so it's, it's more important than ever. Definitely. And I'm really eager to hear from our panelists. So Betsy, how have you been involving hiring managers at Dynatrace? Um, I've, I've definitely included them a little more in the recruitment process, well, myself and, and our team of recruiters. Um, definitely on those hard to fill roles and in implementing, you know, the video aspect into it as much as we can um, seems to be helping. So. That's well, and I think that adding that hiring manager builds trust. And then when you add the layer of video to make that interaction, just like all of you are watching these slides, you're looking at our faces. The reason our faces are up here isn't because, I mean, we all are very cute, but that's not the reason we're here, right? The reason you see our faces is because we want you to see how we really feel about this and how passionate we are. Passionate. And I think that comes across when, Betsy, right? When you're asking these hiring managers to talk about their work, that passion is so obvious yep you, you can't you, it's hard to get through words but through video it definitely comes through but it's not that easy at least personally what i have found in terms of getting those two groups together you know there's a lot of challenges and obstacles along the way um you know katrina what are some of the challenges that you have personally encountered what do you hear yeah well, I think the first thing is that hiring managers aren't content creators. And we need to give these people a little bit of credit, right? When you're asking hard to fill roles, so these are engineers, data scientists, machine learning specialists. These are not people who wake up in the morning and think, man, I'm gonna create a great Instagram video today. Like that's <laughs> not their life. And so they come into it with two big things in their head. I don't belong on video and I don't know how to write. And so when you're trying to ask them to write or create content, um, whether it's video or anything else about work, they're not going to naturally jump up and down for joy. And so we have to bridge this gap and that, you know, kind of instant thought in their head that they don't know what they're doing. So I think it's one part enablement. Um, and it's also that we need to recognize the psychological components of it and really like pep them up on this. So do you have, you know, would you say like there's a, a handful of things to get them excited about it? Or is it like a long-term kind of relationship? Like how do, you, how do you jump in and get started on something like that? In my experience, it's about asking really unique questions. So instead of asking, you know, what do you do every day? I ask, what are you working on right now that might be most interesting to someone in this field? Um, or I will totally like psych them up and I'll say, you know, you could work anywhere. You are so amazing. I would recruit you if you didn't already work here. Why do you stay? Right. And that is so different than the typical questions and prompts you get for video that 
they fall into a natural state and they get a lot more comfortable with you. I think the trust we're trying to convey is the trust we need to bring to those conversations to make sure that people understand. And I see this when I'm writing job postings with people while I run three years. And then also as we try to translate that into all of this content for attraction. I love that. I love having kind of that partnership and asking those probing questions to get things started. So Betsy, what has been your strategy to work more closely with hiring managers? I think definitely that just amplifying, um, you know, Dynatrace employees' voices, but also the hiring managers. And I agree, Katrina, where, you know, there was definitely some, not pushback, but you definitely had to nudge them along and, and give them the confidence that they might need, especially for those, you know, people that aren't used to, to sharing their faces on video or sharing their opinions or um, their thoughts. But I think, you know, giving them the opportunity to talk about their team members and, um, you know, for, in our case, our Dynatrace software, and that's where the passion really comes out, at least for, for my team. Um, so really providing that opportunity um, and also just to share about their, their roles that they're hiring for, um, you know, they're, they're the people that are, that are, have the most say, I mean, really, and, and who they're going to add to their team. So they know exactly what they're looking for and they can provide that, um, that information the best way and, and get candidates excited. Mm. Absolutely. Well, because I think so often we don't give hiring managers the credit of like, we are equally invested in this outcome. Me as a recruiter, right? I want you to get the right person. Like my success is on the line and you want to hire this person so that in six months you're hitting some of those benchmarks that you can't hit without another body. And I think often we don't sell that fact early enough in our conversations, we come to them and go, do you want to make a video? It's not like, Hey, I want to fill this role faster. And I think if we sat down and filmed a video and wrote an awesome job posting that really speaks to the person on the other side of this, the person you're picturing when I ask you who we're hiring, like if, if we're on the same page, I think video will get us that person faster. You want to do a quick one? that's when hiring managers light up, right? And they're like, yes, get me this person so I can stop working until eight o'clock at night. And especially with COVID, I, I think, I'm sorry, Megan, not to cut you off, but um, especially with COVID, you, candidates can't go into the office and see the energy, the atmosphere. And, and, and I think hiring managers can, this gives them the opportunity to brag about their teammates and what, that, what it's like to be on the team. And that's what makes me so happy and excited during these times that we can provide this opportunity. Mm. And, Actually, and Betsy. Sorry, Jenny, cut you off here, but Betsy, you know, you made a great point earlier about culture, right? You know, like before you could get into the office, before you could literally walk them around, show them what the team was like, and you're able to communicate that energy. I mean, talking about challenges now with COVID and how things mm -hmm. have changed. I mean, you have to now communicate that through a little box on a screen. Tough to do. Mm. Sorry, Jay. That's okay. And, and, and Betsy, I was going to say, um, if we've mentioned video a few times here. Um, what, what was the, getting the hiring, hiring managers involved, few, where, who were the early adopters? Who were the people that were the first to jump on board and, and get their face on video for you? Um, I think it worked out nicely because a lot of our, you know, some of our hard to fill roles happened to be in the, the sales function. So, you know, we definitely, I definitely hopped on the opportunity for using those account executives and regional directors who are used to talking and um, passionate about sharing the powerful uh, software of Dynatrace just to talk about that um, to like on video, which I think has been a huge um, advantage because they're used to it and they feel comfortable doing it. And that's, I think was a great starting point um, mm. to jump off of. So, so it was the people that are comfortable um, telling the story to customers and different audiences already in the business that found it easier to make that first step. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And have, I'm sure I've personally seen it too, but you know, has the expectations around video and the use of video 
changed over the year? You know, I, I know at least the people that I've been working with, you went from trying to put on, you know, as much makeup and do your hair as you can to now there's this new level of authenticity around video. Have you found that that's kind of evolved within your organizations? I definitely see that. I think when we're trying to convey trust, when we're trying to create authenticity, like this has been a theme so far, right? You can't do it with a blue background and a logo hovering over your shoulder. Like there, I think as consumers, we are people, there's, a, we don't realize it, but the average person sees over 3000 messages every single day, right? And the ones we don't talk about are the subtle ones. And when you can showcase your background, I actually talked about this recently on another webinar. So for example, you know, I have a pride flag in my background. I have a set of books that are in the colors of rainbows and it sends a subtle message and video has the power to do that, right? To send a subtle message about who you are or what you're interested in or the culture of your team, right? And the second that you add in the formality, you push people away. You, you've just said, this is how we are. And if you're not polished, you don't belong. That's great. And I, I think, you know, Betsy, are you seeing a shift almost from candidate expectations to from that polished video to more about like a, you know, authentic displaying of the culture and the type of people that you're hiring for? Well, in our job descriptions, we definitely have a, a, a little blurb in there saying, you know, we're we're changing our process you know due to covid and it's all remote and you probably will see our our dogs in the background or nieces or nephews or kids walking around and we expect the same for you guys too and we're all trying to make do in this in this world right now and we don't expect anything to be perfect and i think that's for sure just the way it should be for everyone so and i totally agree katrina about sharing you know I set this up because this is not my office. It's upstairs, but it's just fun to show your own personal, uh, you know, what, what you like and what you, you wouldn't get that in a normal, you know, conference room. So it's been kind of fun on that end too. So let's talk about the impact now, right? It seems like both of you have embraced it. Your organizations have embraced it. A lot of people that are joining us today and some of the questions that we've started to see is talking about how they can implement it. So let's talk about, you know, what have, it be, what has, have you seen uh, the impact be both internally and externally to this approach? Uh, how about that? Do you want to start? Me? Yeah. Yeah, sure. Um, so I would definitely say just the, the authenticity, obviously, that's been the, I think, the name of the game here, but um, that's been absolutely number one. And I would say, too, you know, we're a global company and we've been, I've been able to get a whole bunch of people from all over the world to do it. So I think that shows just how diverse we are. And, um, you know, we're getting people from different functions and teams and, and roles and locations. It's just been great and, and you know, fulfilling on that end as well. But um, I think providing a little more pressure on the hiring managers um, with videos like such as these mm -hmm. has been also just nice to see some balance in, in, you know, the recruitment process and for us to all kind of work together. Um, and also just, you know, I think at least for Dynatracers, seeing their teammates or their hiring managers um, provide these videos, it's, it's allowing them to feel more confident and ready to do their own. So I definitely have a, a, a line of people are ready to, to share their Dynatrace life stories, which has been um, huge. And I, I, not, yeah, I, I'm really surprised and, and happy for, of that outcome as well. That's great. Yeah. I love that you said the part about we're in, there's more of a balance in the weight of a hire because right, hiring managers actually own a lot more of this equation than we do, right? We do all the legwork, but the decision is not ours. We decide the pipeline, not the hire. And they need to be equally invested. And I think that content creation at least gives the sensation of feeling equally invested. Um, and I, I like that, and I've seen this as well, Betsy, that there's that multiplication effect. So if more hiring managers create videos, then more hiring managers share videos because we've tapped into ego. 
right? When they see their face mm -hmm. on the screen, they share it, period. And so then there's more people sharing. There's more people contributing. Next step, you can create a library of recruitment marketing content that's a go and grab that lets any team across your company snag the content that, that, that's already approved that they can share. And so you can drive referrals, which is obviously one of the top ideas to hire in the first place. And then across the board, your numbers start fluctuating. Time to fill starts to go down. Your hires start to go up. And suddenly your recruiting team looks like the hero uh, because all you did was make the hiring manager the hero. That's a great point. That's awesome, Katrina. Thank you. Okay, so um, I, might, I might share a few, a few closing thoughts, just a few themes that have come through and just get a, any final comments from, um, from the panelists before we uh, move forward to the questions. So, um, so I think some of the themes I've certainly heard throughout the, the session today is that firstly, the, the hiring managers, these, these people aren't content creators, but we really need to, we need to remind them that we're on the same team. We want to, we want to generate the same outcome. Um, and you know, finding finding those hiring managers that can get on board get on board early, um, perhaps that are on the harder, more technical, so harder to fill, more technical roles um, might be a good place to start. Um, and also, and then working together to make the recruitment marketing more authentic um, to, uh, with with those hiring managers' involvement. Um, and then lastly, um, you know, showing showing the results and showing showcasing those back to other managers in the business and and building momentum and building up that library of content that we can reuse. So we don't always have to go back to them every single time, um, but we can also excite them and inspire them to get involved as well. Do you guys have any other final thoughts on that? That was a good recap. Yeah. Well, and I think one question just came in from Gloria, who I totally pressed her to share her question. So I had to give her a shout out. Uh, thank you, Gloria. It was about actually involving marketing too. So I know I run into this a lot where HR is not the sole owner of the content creation in the first place, which you've just created this weird gap between you and the hiring manager and speed, <laughs> frankly, on creating content. Um, and for me, the challenge I will lead those conversations by saying that marketing does not understand this customer. And I've had this conversation a hundred times in a hundred different contexts and Gloria, my advice to you is to push back a little bit on the fact that they aren't allowing HR to be content creators um, because this is your specialty and candidates are than the average consumer. Um, and I would, I would really work to be the creator and have marketing be an approver instead of having marketing approve. But if they insist, I would give them this lecture about how your consumers are not the same as your candidates because they aren't. Um, just, I mean, who here, I want you to type yes into the panel if you have ever been a job seeker before. Because if you don't type yes right now, I know you're not listening. Right. Exactly. Do you remember how it feels? Does it feel like buying a washing machine? Does it feel like buying software? No, it doesn't. It feels like your life is changing. And the only people who truly understand that in your business are the HR and recruiting teams inherently. And then I'll get off my soapbox now. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. It's great. I love the enthusiasm. So if you want to be like Gloria, and please do submit your question to the Q&A feature here, and we'll absolutely get to it in the next 10 minutes or so. Um, we do have another one that has come in. Um, have you seen a shift? Maybe this can be for Katrina as well. Have you seen a shift in mindset on this topic in your work with senior clients? Yeah, I think Right now they recognize that there's a very large talent market, but it is not very niche. And that is a unique challenge all in itself. And so, and honestly, I think COVID has created weird community that we didn't really have in our organizations before, especially with our remote employees. 
Um, so often remote employees were treated like the redheaded stepchildren of the company. Like we'd forget to dial them in. Who's been there before? Like we forget to dial them. We forget to like send them the link to the file we're presenting. We don't log into the Zoom. We just dial into the number and then they can't see the screen. I mean, it goes on and on and on. But I think there is, there's this community feeling now where people want to help each other a little bit more. And a little bit extra. And I think that's the big mindset shift before it kind of felt like everybody had competing priorities. Uh, and now I'm hearing more teams saying like, we're in this together. That's great. Betsy, are you seeing the same thing as well? Yeah, I agree with that. Um, I think it, is this just regarding COVID? Uh, the question wasn't specific, but, you know, definitely talk about your recent experience or even how it's changed since before COVID. Yeah, I think um, I, I'll go piggyback off of Katrina's. I, um, you know, there's times where I do just if I know a hiring manager well enough to, to ping them and ask them if, you know, if they'd be willing to hop on video to talk about their open roles and teams. And um, I think that it's always been a positive answer and always yes. Um, and I think, I don't know if that's because of, you know, they're working from home and things seem to be a little more chill, uh, you know, at, at certain times when it comes to, um, you know, work and work-life balance. But I definitely do feel the community aspect too, as of right now, so. Uh, here's a good follow-up that came in. So because we're all working from home, how do you identify the early adopters to get involved? Apparently you just can't swing by their desk anymore. I think that's where the pinging can can still come in and in, in handy or if um, you know if there's someone you haven't met with before like a hiring manager um, maybe CC the person that is the liaison between you and that hiring manager or you and that person um, that I've done that before many times which always seems to help I'm a sneaky I'm not gonna say the word but I was about to say it be because what I do is whenever I send instructions, I use Loom, L-O-O-M, and it's a screen recording software that will track the views. And so I'll send a video to a small segment and it will tell me exactly who watched. And if they watch, they get a message, again, a message from my, it's my assistant really, but it comes from me. And it says like, ooh, like, are you ready? basically, and gives them the next step. And so I actually use track. This is really embarrassing. I was like, well, <laughs> but seriously, it works because people who watch the video, people who engage with your email, they're actually the people that you should be using. And I, I guess that's just old marketing tactics put to work. Oh, I love it. Sometimes, like you know, that. Little, sometimes you got to figure out any approach that works, right? So what would you say is, and this is for both of you, your number one tip for anyone watching today who might be dealing with apprehensive hiring managers? Be the guinea pig. Um, I, I find that if I go out there and I do it, they, as long as they have an example and some kind of model, Mm -hmm. We're 75% of the way there. I can send candy. I can kiss a little butt. I can send messages to managers to get us the rest of the way. But like, as long as you show them exactly what to do, that takes away most of the hesitance. Yeah, I think making it as easy as possible. And, you know, in the email that you send to someone uh, requesting, making it sound super nonchalant. And it's just because it is video. Jo my job does make it super, super easy. So just share, you know, sharing that and sharing how quickly it takes to do it and just get it done um, has seemed to help as well. That's great. All right. Hey, Jay, are you seeing some questions coming on your side too? Yeah, I think, um, so, there's, so there's one here about, so we've talked a bit about getting hiring managers on video um what uh what about um i suppose the the longer term uh, the longer term view of um how else hiring managers um could could be involved um after, beyond the i suppose the initial job ad 
so how they can be involved. So Jay, are you, are, I, I can't say the question, but are you seeing, is it more about like long-term involvement? So beyond just that initial touch, right? Like how do you stay in lockstep with hiring managers? Yeah. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah. I mean, the biggest piece in my experience is just setting better expectations. Um, often and i heard this from carmen hudson so um shout out to her highly recommend following her she has done a lot of content about really good hiring manager relationships and a big piece is over communicating um over communicating your funnel over communicating your slate setting expectations early that you know um okay so you're going to create this video right now i'm going to attach it to this job and it will be available for three weeks can you please share it with people you know who you've worked with before? Great. At the end of this three weeks, you and I are gonna have a one-on-one -on -one meeting. I'll let you know how many applications we got and uh, we'll rave about all the amazing views and you know comments of, on your amazing video. Then, 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 right? And then it's just every piece of it. And also I think the same models that we provide for external candidate experience, we need to provide those models to hiring managers about incredible candidate experience post-apply. I'm not a recruiter, so I don't work with hiring managers every day, so I don't really know that. But Katrina, what I, what you said sounds great. <laughs> well, I mean, like we said before, right? Hiring managers own 90%. We own the slate. They own the decision. That's the bottom line. And the the space between apply and decision is a lot bigger than most people give it credit. Anyone who says hiring is easy is full of something not pleasant. Um, and if you aren't in lockstep with your hiring manager, it just makes everything so much harder. But the thing that we don't talk about as often and the thing that I think about a lot actually is the fact that we make it so much harder on candidates. Like, it's miserable. Job seeking is not fun. It is not a joyous experience. It's not something anyone wants to do. So, um, and it looks like we just had a question come in from Nori. Yes, um, she wants to know, is video posted on the company website, Instagram, or Facebook? I love that. Betsy, do you guys kind of have a, every video gets posted in all these places plan or how do you promote those videos i do right now our ats doesn't allow it to do it on our job descriptions but um that's a that would be number one spot um social media though i do post it just about everywhere um instagram linkedin twitter and then we have a you know a youtube account too a Dine and trace life youtube account that has um, all of them there as well. Yeah, I do the same. I tell smaller teams, especially just make a list. That's like every time we create a video, it should be promoted in these places. <laughs> um, the one thing that usually gets forgotten off of that list. And I noticed it wasn't part of the question is that it should also be sent to every single person in that department on that team. Mm -hmm. Yes, exactly. Because they might know somebody, right? They've already worked in this department. They've probably worked in a department just like it at a company just like this before. Uh, and you need to go bigger than the hiring manager. I'm talking every single person in that division, department, go as broad as you can, but somewhat segmented within the company organization. Brand advocates. All right. Well, thank you everyone for joining. Thank you for our panelists and our host for today. Um, we have now officially run out of time, but of course, you know, uh, tomorrow you receive a copy of the recording. So if you feel like you missed anything or if you want to re-watch a certain part, definitely check your email for that tomorrow. Um, as always, please reach out to a monster representative for any of your hiring needs. We'd be happy to help you find the right fit. Uh, for your company either today, tomorrow, whenever it might be. We'll also include links for Betsy and for Katrina as well. So feel free to reach out them directly if you have any specific questions. So thank you again. Have a great day. Talk soon. Thanks, everybody. Bye.